six years ago, my next guest nearly died while trapped in a fire in her New York City apartment. She was just four years old. Ever since, she's wanted to find and thank the heroic firefighter who saved her life. Then, in the middle of working as a nurse on the front lines of this pandemic, she found him. This is a crazy story. Let's bring her in to share it. Hey, what's up, Deirdre? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am actually lovely. I'm doing lovely. Um, so take us back. This is the craziest, coolest story. I'm so excited to have it on the show. Um, and but take us back to the fire when you were a kid, right? You were only four, right? I was, yeah. So I don't remember all the details from that day, but I do know that it was a really cold day in late December and the fire had broken out in our loft. It was just my mother and I living there at the time. And there was a man from our building um, who was able to run outside looking for help. And much to our luck, there was a fire uh, truck just parked down the street. They had been called to check out uh, some broken water pipes down the road. The man from our building was able to get a hold of one of the firefighters that was in the truck at, named Jean. Um, but because they were, um, you know, they weren't there in a fire call, they didn't have all of the fire gear with them. And so um, Jean just grabbed his axe and a hat and um, raced down the street and up the, to the sixth floor uh, where my mother and I were trapped inside. And he was able to rescue my mother first, but the fire was fully charged at that point. And so there was a lot of smoke. Um, and he had to crawl in his belly in order to try and find me. And by the time he got to me, I was unconscious and wasn't breathing. Oh. Um, and he gave me two quick breaths and um, I began to cry and he got me down to the street to safety and was able to hook me up on a respirator. But I am you know, sure that if it wasn't for Jean, I would not be here today. <laughs> You've actually dedicated your life to service. Can you explain to everyone how? Yeah, I guess you could say that. I, uh, I joined the Connecticut Army National Guard on my 17th birthday and served for about 12 years. I eventually became an officer and was a helicopter pilot. Uh, but when I was- What? That's so cool! <laughs> See? But yeah, I met my husband in flight school. And when I decided that I wanted to get married and have children, I left the service and went back to school and became a nurse. And when everything was happening in New York, I kind of felt called to help out. And I sat my family down and we had a big discussion and I took a travel nursing assignment to go up to New York City. And I worked at uh, a hospital in Brooklyn. I worked at NYU Langone uh, in Brooklyn for, for eight weeks. And um, Jean had always been on my mind. And so when I decided to head up to New York City, I brought the newspaper clipping. Um, our rescue had made the front page of a New York City paper back in 1983. And I packed that in my suitcase and decided that I was going to try and track him down when I was up in New York. So I want to talk about the call that ended up, you know, happening with, with Jean. But first, we need someone else in this conversation, obviously. So let's bring Jean in out from our waiting room. Hi, Jean. How you doing? <laughs> Pretty good, how about yourself? I am in awe of this story. I know it's not really a story, it's your life, but I just, y'all's <laughs> testimony and your lives is, is incredible. It just speaks to how connected we really all are. So, I mean, both of you, like, tell us about your first call with each other. I'll, I'll start with you, dear. Do you go ahead and tell us? I had been working in the emergency department and people were constantly dropping off food for us. Um, New Yorkers really came out to support those of us on the front lines in a big way. And one night some firefighters had dropped off some pizza for us and I followed them out into the ambulance bay and just kind of shared my story briefly with them. And one of the young firefighters happened to have the uh, captain's phone number for the ladder company that Jean used to work with. And so when I got off of work the next morning, I picked up the phone and gave the captain a call and he knew immediately who Jean was. And so, um, you know, part of me felt like if it was that easy, I really should have called the station a long time ago, but I was really happy. I hung up the phone and about 40 minutes later, uh, Jean called me and I had the opportunity to say thank you. That, I mean, the, 
I, once again, it's just an incredible story. So, I mean, Jean, so you get this call. How incredibly awesome is that? It was just wonderful. It was just a wonderful experience and it continues to be. Uh, it's just, and uh, I was in the right place at the right time. And, uh, and thank God I was there, you know, uh, and uh, yeah. this, this, she turned out to be just a, 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 a super person, just a wonderful young woman. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and it, it, and to get this, uh, uh, all these accolades uh, 37 years later, just it was a nice experience also. It's an incredible thing, and I'm, I'm so glad that you came on the show and, and y'all let us share this story because I think more now than ever, we need to hear these amazing stories of like happy things and positive things and people, you know, putting their lives on the line and, and putting themselves out of their comfort zone maybe and, and helping others. We need those stories more now than ever. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing it with us, all right? Oh, oh my pleasure. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Please don't make me keep going.